Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having an incredible day and today's video is going to be all about achieving realism in drawing. I'm going to be sharing a time lapse of a pencil portrait drawing that I created the other day and while you see me drawing, I'm going to be sharing my top six tips that are going to help you achieve a realism in any kind of drawing of any kind of subject. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm super happy you found it. Consider subscribing because every single Friday I share a new video with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and general encouragement for beginner and intermediate artists. Also, make sure that you click on the little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video. Okay, everyone, so give me a like if you're as excited as I am to continue developing your artistic skills, and let's get into the time lapse. Okay everyone, so next I'm going to be sharing my top six tips that you should apply whenever you're trying to create a realistic looking drawing. Now, as I said in the intro, these things don't just apply when you're creating a face or a portrait, but whenever you're trying to draw pretty much any kind of subject in a realistic manner. Also, before I begin, I just want to take a quick moment to mention something that I have mentioned in past videos. And it's the fact that I'm much more of a sketcher slash painter than I am a drawer and a realist slash hyper realist artist. What I'm trying to say is that I currently get much more enjoyment out of creating art that is more expressive or has more of myself in it than creating artwork that is absolutely identical to whatever reference I'm using, whether it be a drawing or painting from life or from a photograph. This said, I think that it's incredibly valuable for beginners to grasp the concept of realism and be able to create believable looking artwork that transmits believable form and proportion. And I also personally enjoy challenging myself with this kind of work every now and then because I find that it's a great way to keep my observational skills sharp. I started my drawing by creating an initial sketch completely freehand and what I do is I focus on things like proportion and effective location of different elements in regards to each other in this beginning stage and I personally really enjoy uh, exercising my freehand skills as opposed to tracing though I don't believe there's anything wrong with it if that's the way you want to go about it. I personally love incorporating freehand sketching into pretty much anything I do, if it's a drawing or even a painting. I feel like even though it might take me longer to achieve effective proportion and a placement of elements, I think that overall I get a lot more out of the process and that's why I, I really am a proponent for freehand drawing. Okay, so after all of those little disclaimers that I have just shared with you guys, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my first tip, which is taking time to select an excellent reference photo to work from. So seriously take time to search for a good quality photograph that is not only going to allow you to zoom in if you need to see any details, but that also shows a great play between lights and shadows. If you're a beginner just starting out, I highly recommend looking into a photo editing software that is going to allow you to open up photographs and turn them into grayscale. It's highly likely that you're going to be able to pinpoint lights, darks, and midtones a lot easier in a photo that is black and white. And being able to discern between the different values in your photograph or in your reference is key so that you're able to recreate those values in your drawing. And make no mistake, value reigns over everything else when it comes to creating realism. And if you're a bit more experienced and you're actually drawing from life or from direct observation, I have an entire video and a couple of blog posts that I wrote a while back that I'm going to make sure to link down below in the description box because in those I share 
tips about how to create visually pleasing and interesting compositions, as well as tips to make the whole process a little bit less daunting. But whatever you choose to do, whether you decide to work from a photographic reference or whether you want to draw from life, make sure that you're starting with a solid reference. Tip number two to achieve a believable or realistic looking drawing is to know and prep your supplies. So make sure that you are using smooth drawing or sketching paper that will allow you seamless blending. Make sure that you have at least a few different pencil grades on hand. So I really like creating my initial light sketch using a 2H or an H pencil. I also like having a couple of different B pencils, like maybe a 2B and a 4B that will allow me to start placing my values gradually. And I like having my darkest pencil, which in this case I'm going to be using an 8B for my darkest values. Something else that is very important to have on hand when you're creating a realistic drawing is a blending stump or a tortillion. And you can also use tissue paper to blend in larger areas. You'll also need a good sharpener and a couple of different types of erasers. I love having my regular soft rubber eraser on hand and also a smaller eraser that is going to allow me to create highlights or lighten up a very small tiny areas that I need to get into. In this case, I am using the Mono Zero eraser, but you can also use a kneaded eraser for this. And one final thing that I would like to mention in the supplies list that I have found very helpful and handy is to have a regular piece of paper on hand or even a tracing paper where you can rest your hand on as you're drawing. If you don't have somewhere you can rest your hand on, you're probably going to be smudging your graphite all over your paper and things can get pretty messy. I'm going to be leaving a list to all the different products that I used to create this drawing here today down below in the description box in case you're interested in buying some new drawing supplies for yourself. If you use these links, you'll be helping me out a tiny bit so I can keep creating these videos for you and this is at no extra cost to you. Okay guys, so moving on to tip number three. This would be to make sure that you're always starting with a very light initial sketch and make sure that the sketch is focusing on largest shapes and on achieving effective proportion and effective location of elements in regards to each other. So do not worry about small details and shadings yet. And whether you're creating this initial drawing a freehand or by tracing your picture, make sure that you are making your lines very light so that they are completely invisible. You don't want any lines showing at the end. Tip number four is directly related to what I just said about the lines. And it's to keep in mind throughout the entire drawing process that in realism, there are no visible lines. You see, in real life, we are able to see different shapes because of their variety in values, which is created by light and shadow. And so shapes in real life are not defined by outlines as they are in cartoons. And usually when we are required to create some form of visible line in realism, it's to recreate some form of texture, like for example, hair or eyebrows or eyelashes. And even when we do leave visible lines behind, there is usually some sort of variety in each of them. And with variety, I mean that they are not completely uniform in terms of thickness and value from one edge of the line to the other. And all of this leads to much less stark looking lines at the end. Tip number five is going to be to make sure that you are creating gradual smooth transitions between your lighter and darker values. Unless you're using a photograph with a very dramatic lighting in it, usually in real life there is a gradual transition between darks and lights. And also, it is important to notice that there should not be any visible lines at any point throughout this transition. And finally, tip number six is going to be to make sure that you are creating a very wide variety in values throughout your drawing. So in order to really give your drawing a sense of three-dimensionality and form, 
you have to make sure that you are creating very light values, very dark values, and a huge, huge variety in between them. So once you have been working on your drawing for a while, you're probably going to find that you're going to have to go back into some areas and lighten them back up with your erasers. So this is very important because you want to ensure that you have those lightest lights in your drawing. But at the same time, you should not be afraid of adding in your darkest darks. You need that balance between lights and darks and you really need to get in there and darken those deepest values in order to make your drawing really pop out. This said, make sure that you're never pressing down on your paper too hard with your pencil. You don't want to leave those visible lines at the end, those scratches created by your pencil tip. Okay, and to finish this up, I just want to share a final bonus tip, and this would be to make sure that you're looking at your reference at least 50% of your working time. Working on those observational skills is absolutely key to you succeeding at drawing something realistically.
Okay, everyone, so that is it for today. I hope that you found this video helpful, and I also hope that it inspired you to go and try some realistic drawing for yourself. I would also love to know in the comment section below what kind of subject you are particularly interested in drawing more realistically. Is it animals, faces, objects? What is it? And remember that it's super important to master these skills that I was explaining throughout the video in simple subjects before you move on to things like portraits. Thank you so much for visiting my channel and watching my video. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. Make sure that you like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to keep hearing from me. And see you next Friday!